This little dirt bag is my dog. This is Mango. And Mango's about 18 years old at this point. And Mango was a real problem for his previous owner, who was somebody that I dated. And I couldn't tell the woman anything, which is very indicative of every woman that I've ever dated. You can't, you can't tell, you can't tell a woman anything. There's no way. And she knew better than the dog trainer. She did, you know, she did horrible things with the dog. And that's what I want to talk about is dogs in laps. And Mango is never allowed in my lap, except for right now when we're doing a video. And that's the only time that he's allowed in my lap. I would never let Mango in my lap. And the reason for this is when you have a dog in your lap like this, what you're telling the dog is that you're to be dominated. And if your dog is going to dominate you, it's going to dominate other people. It's going to start looking at you like a possession. Having a dog in your lap or in a bed is some of the worst shit that you could ever do. And his previous owner that I dated, I love the girl, she's great, but she just is too interested in oxytocin and getting that surge. And that's how it was back then too. I'd tell her like, don't have mango in your bed, don't put him in your lap. And there's nothing that I could say that was gonna change her attitude about how she felt dogs should be dealt with. And it's the same way with her. If you go in her pet store, she wants to give dogs treats and that kind of stuff. She's never changed. She has another dog and she has problems with that dog too. Same type of problems that stem from the same type of issues. The dog is too big, so it can't go in her lap like this, but she allows the dog to sleep in her bed and that's the same thing. You get status issues with the dog where the dog sees itself as an equal and they're not. He is not an equal. He's a dog living in a human society. They must learn to be compliant and confusing the dog by sitting it in your lap. Yes, it's cute. And yes, it feels good to like, you know, be doing that sleeping with the dog in your bed. It's great to do it. And I've done it and I still do it with Ike, but Ike is fully trained and old. And I know that if I'm sick and I don't feel good and I want Ike to sleep in bed with me and Remy and the cat, that the next day I'm gonna have to train Ike extra hard and he's sort of gonna be a douchebag. It's like instant, instant karma. So if you if you wanna do this with your dog, you wanna have your dog in a lap and, and you're thinking that, well, the dog likes it and that's how a lot of people gauge everything with their dog, but they like it, you're gonna have issues with your dog. It doesn't matter what you, you train the dog what to like. They're just as happy on the floor sitting next to you. They don't have to be in your lap. You're just screwing up the dog by putting it in your lap. This is the truth. If, if I didn't think, if I didn't know that this was a problem, Mango would be in my lap all the time. Mango would be sleeping in my bed all the time. But it is, it's a fucking issue and don't think that it's not. Do you have problems with your dog? Do you allow it in your lap? Do you let it sleep in your bed? Do you give it people food? All these things send the wrong message to the dog. This is one of the worst things you can do for a dog is have it in your lap. Have it sleeping in your bed, giving it people food. People food not, not only is bad for your dog's behavior, it's physiologically bad for your dog too. It doesn't have enough calcium in it. Dogs need more than twice as much calcium as a human. So giving a people food, that screws up the status and you're screwing up the calcium phosphorus level of your dog. Mango bit 10 people, 10 people in a period of about six months. And finally, the woman that I was dating, you know, after he bit somebody real bad and they were complaining, saying, I can't work and all this. She's like, this is going to cost me a fortune. She hands me Mango like this and says, here, you take him. And I took him, you're damn right. Because the whole time I was like, that dog's a little bit too much for, for my, for Joni. You can't, you can't handle this dog. You know, I tried to convince her to give me mango after about a month and a half or two months. I was like, why don't you let that dog live with me? He keeps biting people. And, and this is what she said. I swear to God, she said, I'd be horrible at your place. 
like with the, with the train right by your studio because he was real shaky he was afraid of buses he was afraid of everything you know and she's like all the animals over there he needs peace and quiet no that's not what he needed he needed to be treated like a dog this is a dog it's not a little that's the problem this is not a surrogate child it's a dog you must treat it like a dog he's not afraid of buses he's not afraid he's not afraid of anything <laughs> But he was, because he was being treated a certain way. And any time he showed any type of fear, it was always this consoling attitude. Oh, it'll be okay, Mango. Fuck that. When he came over here and he started being afraid, I said, stop being afraid, Mango. And I also spit, you all right, Banch? I also spit in his mouth. And if you don't know anything about this, if you have an unconfident dog, you can spit in the dog's mouth and it almost has like an instantaneous effect. It might take five or six sessions to for the dog to start seeing what's going on, but it really does, it works. So we did a lot of that for about six months. Like anytime he was shaking outside, if a bus made a, if, he, if we were in the car and a bus came alongside and, and he started making, like, like freaking out shaking or something, I'd pull over and spit in his mouth. I know it sounds strange. It's it's a very old, old method, old school method of dog training. And it just sort of puts the dog into this position of being like, I'm the mother, you're the puppy, you need to do what you're told. So you might want to try that, but that's not going to be effective if you're going to keep putting the dog in your lap. Do not put the dog in your lap. Do not... Let the dog sleep in your bed. If you, if you do this, you're just going to create severe problems with your dog. And we have too many dogs that are ending up in animal shelters being put down. Four million, you know, in the United States alone are being put down. Don't do it. Don't put the dog in your lap. It's, it's one of the worst things that you can do. And there's, there's, there's a lot of bad things that you can do for a dog. This is one of the more common things, and it's one of the worst things. Along with letting the dog sleep in your bed, you're going to screw up the status of your dog. Look at Banch. Isn't he cute? He's a good boy. Ah! Can squeeze his little face off. It's like a little, little blonde monkey. Kane, you're a little monkey. By the way, check out this video of Mango goose hunting. Do you think he's not tough? This guy walks into a swamp. This tiny little dog walks into a swamp and goes goose hunting. This would have never happened if I would have been letting him sleep in my bed and having him in my lap. Look at this. Dog. See? Keeps up. It's a fucking little stud. You're damn right, Mango. He's a fucking machine. I right, go. It's a fucking stud. 